Okay, so we're sitting here with uh, former mayor of New Bedford and, of course, former district court judge uh, John Markey. Thank you for uh, joining us here, first of all. Well, it's good to see you, Paul. I haven't been around for a while. I'm pretty well ch stay at home. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, the time you were mayor. You became mayor at a very interesting time. Obviously, it was the end of the turbulent 1960s. What was it like running for mayor at that time, and why did you do it? Well, I did it really because of the tax situation. I tried to get several of the then city councilors to run because the taxes had gone up $44 in two years of uh, the previous administration, George Rogers. Right. So when I couldn't get anybody to run, I said, I can't win, but I got some things to say. And that was it. And we ended up winning. Yeah, right. Were you surprised that you won? Yes, very surprised <laughs> yeah? because Eddie Harrington was also running. Yeah, right. And I think there were about eight of us. We stayed there for six terms. I remember that. Obviously, you were there for a long time. A lot of mayors have difficulty getting reelected for 10 years. Why do you think you were successful? Well, I think if you do what you have to do, uh, you know, such as closing fire stations and different things that cause a lot of, well, upset people. But I think in the long run, my concern was always the taxpayer. And you kind of had a reputation for being like a no-nonsense, kind of uh, don't-take-any-bull kind of a mayor, right? So is that your personality? Is that how you governed at the time, kind of like give it to them straight? Oh, I, I always felt that way. I, I remember uh, Russ Baldwin, who was a good uh, newsman. He said it was good going to City Hall because you could ask the mayor anything you wanted to ask him. And, of course... He answered anything that he wanted to say. Right. Well, so, you talked about, you know, having difficulties with the unions. Obviously, you have to negotiate with the police and the fire and the teachers and all that. And, of course, there was a famous moment. You were in a disagreement with the fire department, and you took your shirt off and you took your pants off, and you were there in your underwear saying that they were taking the clothes off your back. Why did you do that? That was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Well, that, 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 was, that all started with a guy named... He worked for Channel 6, uh -huh. uh, Delaney. And uh, he said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I guess I'll just take my clothes off. And then he asked me after the verdict came down against me in having to give them all the back pay, uh, he said, well, are you going to live up to what you said? I said, I always live up to my word. <laughs> that was between he and myself. Yeah. And uh, when I got to work that day that he was going to be there, he had notified all of the networks. The whole purpose of it was that he was going to get like six hundred dollars if I did that, and then, he, <laughs> but I didn't know he was going to have everybody else there. Yeah. So it was kind of embarrassing, but it made the point that I was trying to make. Right. Obviously, you had the mayor's car, and you had uh, the police uh, scanner coming into your car, and you were notorious for if you heard a call that the police were chasing a suspect, you, the mayor of New Bedford, would get out of the car and chase the suspect. You actually did that? There was a car chase, so I went up, I think it was Willis Street, or the one, one way, the wrong way, and blocked where he was coming, and he hit me right in the broadside. Uh, and they got him because they had said that the fellow had a, a gun. So I was in the just in the chase, and... Uh, blocked the street that he couldn't get by, and so he, he ended up hitting me in the mayor's car. A lot of people would say, wow, well, that Mayor Markey, he's, he's nuts. Why is he doing that? Well, I probably was a little, but the police was always my favorite department. I saw a break in progress into a, a finance company on Union Street, 
And so I thought I was suspicious, and I drove around the block, put my lights out and parked, and sure enough, there goes a barrel right through the finance company window. They tried to call me back, but I got out of the car to chase this guy, and I pinned him up the against the wall at the Unitarian Church. There's an anchor fence behind all those bushes. Right. And so I grabbed the fence, put my arm around him, put my knuckle in his back and said, you move, I'll shoot you. I didn't have a gun, though. <laughs> and then the police finally arrived. It's a great story, and it's admirable to do that, right? But a lot of people would say, gee, you know, you're the mayor. That's, that's crazy. Like, you, you were taking a chance, right? Well, I didn't feel as though I was taking a chance. I was just trying to help out. Right. And I think anyone who didn't, whether it was a mayor or a guy on a corner, you know, it made no difference. Right. So you became a judge, obviously. Uh, that was a totally different job. Um, obviously, I'm an attorney. I go in front of a lot of different judges. The thing that I wonder about is, is how difficult is it to make a decision, uh, not just on guilt or innocence. I know you did a lot of criminal work, but you have to decide to give a sentence, to not give a sentence, to give a jail sentence, to give more of a rehabilitation sentence, deal with the opioid crisis that we have now. How did you approach that as the judge? I, f I always felt deep down that my job was to be uh, there to try to help somebody to get them rehabbed or into programs and so forth. I had a woman who was a drug addict, and I convinced her that she could go into a place, and it was in Stanley Street, I believe, in Fall River. And all the police court officers had left, so I said, gosh, I'm gonna have to take her myself. Well, I didn't wanna be in a car alone, so I called my wife, and she came with me, and we brought her over to Stanley Street. <laughs> I had just bought an axe, and it was on the floor of the back seat where sh this young girl was sitting, and it made my wife really nervous. <laughs> oh, I've taken a lot of people to, into treatment. Right. Uh, once you, it's hard to convince them, uh, but you know, you, you're really looking that this is a human being that you're talking to, and yeah, you have to put them in jail, or you can try any alternative that's available. And I always felt that I was just a community uh, judge. Mayor's job is, is a fun job. And I've told each of my successors, you know, every day you can do something different. Today, it's the worst job you could ever possibly have. And tomorrow, it's the best job you could ever have. We had a lot of community development money, I think something like $13 million. So we put it into infrastructure and tried to rebuild the downtown area. And it's led to, finally, there's a nice uh, national park there. Right. So, no, that's I'm proud of, but uh, it only I was only at the beginning of it. Well, uh, they gave you that plaque in that plaza, the, the Jack Maki uh, Plaza, and they have your uh, plaque down there and all that. So is that nice? I mean, yeah, I see you shaking your head. It's sort of like, uh, it's a nice little honor, right? Well, it is a nice honor, but uh, when I first got a call from Mayor Mitchell, I said, no, nah, you know, I'm out of there for 20 years, 30 years, and, you know, I'm what, what you call a has-been. And... <clears throat> He said, well, if you're not interested, how about your grandchildren? I said, now you got me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he got you. Exactly. Yeah. What are you up to these days? Well, I'm just trying to stay alive. Uh, you know, we've got all kinds of ailments, oxygen, you name it, we've had it. Uh, but we've had good lives, got 17 wonderful grandchildren, I've got a bad shoulder, and my COPD, all kinds of things. Did you stop smoking, or are you still sneaking in a cigarette once in a no, while? No, I have to turn the oxygen off when I smoke. 
<laughs> You're not supposed to be doing that. I know. <laughs> uh, All right, one, one final thing. Politics today, it seems pretty contentious. You know, I, I follow politics, and I already know what somebody's going to say before they start talking, depending on what side they're on. It doesn't seem like uh, there's a real attempt to get the consensus. Well, I, I think it's mostly spin today, at least out of the national right. news. Uh, it's spinning it one way or another. You listen to Fox News and you hear one side. You, you turn into CNN and you get a total opposite. So somewhere there's a middle, but there's such bitterness between the parties, it's... It's pathetic to watch. All right, Judge Markey, Mayor Markey, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a real uh, to treasure. See you, Paul, it's great to see you. Say hello to your dad. I worked <laughs> with him for a few years, and a great guy. And uh, of course, he's up there a couple of years older than I am. He's in his mid 80s. I'm in my mid, well, almost my mid 80s. And uh, he's been a great friend all, all over the years. And uh, I just wish him well. and. As I said to you before, I'm going to get up there and see him one of these days. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much again. Okay, Fantastic. Paul, All right, great you. to see you.